Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, I'm in lockdown, just like most of the country. Got a bit of spare time today in this video. I've really wanted to get out for some time. It's something that I've done now for a number of organizations. And it's and it's integrating the infrastructure's code from uh, Virilize Automation and the security validation through Cloud Health Secure State. So for those who don't know what Secure State is, uh, it essentially you know scans your uh, public cloud environments and it, get, it it checks against conformance like you know it's got a lot it's got like 800 things out of the box but you can make your own policies you know things like you know not having SSH open up to the internet or maybe not having an S3 available uh, directly in all those sort of things right like just making sure that your, your environment is secure uh, from potential threats or data leaks and those sort of things um, but the great, the, I guess the really strong thing about it is anyone can scan that stuff. Uh, but this takes in the context of the particular deployment. So for example, I deploy uh, a machine. It happens to be internal, no public facing. It's connected to a network uh, that another service or machine might be connected to, but that's got, you know, access to the internet or, you know, uh, SSH opened up to it or whatever it might be which means that it knows that well okay while I've deployed this and this part might be secure uh, through the context of what it's connected to it might be at risk right so it has that environmental context which is really really powerful now there's a lot of infrastructures code scanning uh, capabilities out there and look they should be used as well uh, but what they don't have is the context, right? You can say, oh, you know, I don't want to open up this port group or we can, you know, only use this security group and all those sort of things. They can do those basic checks, but it only knows it for that one deployment. It doesn't know that someone might have gone off and changed something manually, right? Um, it has no context to the wider environment and where this thing's being placed. And that's where Secure State comes in really, really well. So what I'm going to do is kick off a pipeline through CodeStream. Uh, it's gonna deploy two different deployments, uh, both at, uh, bo both the same thing, both in AWS, native AWS, uh, and then it's gonna do some checking to make sure it's validated. Uh, obviously, hopefully if it fails, uh, it should get, I should have an approval step to be able to approve it, but if it's passed, it should just fly through. So what I'm going to do here is I've got my pipelines up and running. Uh, I'm going to run two of these. So two exact same things. And this is great thing about VRA2 is that you can I can deploy the same blueprint but different versions of it. Uh, so let's look at version 1.4. So I'll uh, run that. And also because this is agnostic too is that this can go to Azure as well. So I can do the same deployment but to Azure and Secure State's going to pick that up as well and all the stuff. So, you know, both... Uh, VRA being completely agnostic and secure state being agnostic uh, means that you don't have to do anything special to make you know things work differently based on the clouds they go to so I'm going to do 5 1.5 there and run that all right so let's just have a look at first off the the two versions that I run so let's go back to cloud assembly I just want to show you the differences uh, here and we'll go design We'll look at, it's just the Hello World one. So it's just got a load balancer, you know, VM on, on, onto a uh, network. So that's the version history. I want to do a def against oh, 1.5 and 1.4, right? So the only difference here, and this is really just to prove a point that it can work, right? Is that I've put this 1.5 is on a private network. It has no, internet connectivity whatsoever right uh, and this one though has a public address uh, and its network zone is on the public too so it's fully accessible from the from the internet right so same blueprint two versions uh, pretty simple let's go back and have a look at our pipeline that's going to kick this off now the great thing about secure state too is that it doesn't scan once an hour or once a day, it'll have the the vulnerability score within ten seconds of those resources being deployed, right? Um, because it doesn't do you know one massive scan, it actually it hooks into to the to the logs and to like you know AWS Security Guard and all those other things, 
uh, to be able to get all the information and live stream that in without the overhead of hitting API limits and all those sort of things. So it's really, really good. Now let's uh, have a look. So we deploy a template, all right? So that's, that's off deploying. Uh, you can see that I'm taking the version input there and the platform input. Uh, then, uh, yeah, validate that it's up. And then we go, okay, um, I do a login. So I want to log into my um, secure state console. So it's to VMware Cloud Services, essentially. Uh, then I get the rules. So what I'm doing is instead of specifying a rules, I just want to get back um, whatever from my secure state scan. Now the secure state scan doesn't give you details around the description of the rule or the name of the rule. It just has the rule ID and the score and those sort of things, right? So I wanted to be able to present something nice back at the end of the report to be able to say, this is what you've, you've failed, right? No matter what it is. So I want to be able to get all the rules, right? So I get all the rules. So then I've got the name, the descriptions, all that sort of detail, and then I can marry them up with what's been discovered on the VMs. So essentially I get the rules here. Um, obviously the bearer token from the login. I get the rules from the API here. Uh, and then I do a secure state scan. So it's not scan, but just give me back the details on these machines. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm, I've tagged these machines that are being deployed in the resources and all that with a deployment tag essentially. So I've got deployment tag and I'm using the deployment ID. Uh, that way, you know, I could easily find what they are. So essentially, I'm wanting to, I'm filtering it based on deployment ID. So I should only get it to things from that one deployment. And then I've got a risk score. So I'll go max value 100 uh, and 40. And this is something that you would determine over time what best meets your business uh, requirements, right? Um, but I've, I've done those too. So I want to get everything from 40 to 100. Uh, and then I pass the data. So this is where I marry up the rules with what's come back from that, from that uh, request. And then I do uh, an assess score. So essentially I've set a limit of 70. So 70 is a, a, a medium. Anything higher than 70 uh, becomes, a, uh, becomes a, a, a critical, right? And so I've just gone, yep, 70 is my limit. So I'm gonna get what my, what my highest risk um, score was, and then if it's if it's uh, higher than seventy, uh, then I need an approval. If it's lower than seventy, I don't, and that's where the approval process steps in, right? So um, this is where I assess that, and if it comes back and it's um, and it's failed or passed, right? Uh, and that's it, nice and simple, um, very easy REST API to work with. Now let's go and see how these executions are going. All right, so they're finished. So you can see one's completed uh, and one's finished. So if we actually have a look at this one, so this is um, the 1.4, I believe. So inputs blueprint 1.4. We can see it deploys, um, uh, skill state. So we can look at this, we get a whole bunch of things back. So these are the different rules. So you can see the, this is the payload that you get from the results of the violations, right? Uh, nothing too useful in those, uh, which is why I get the name. Uh, then I parse the data and we'll see I actually create a HTML um, body here, right? Now that body is gonna feed into uh, my approval. So I look at the risk, so I've got my parameters. So my risk is 78 uh, and my limit's 70. So I'm go I've failed that. Uh, so if I have a look at this, I can actually see I've got three violations. Uh, you can see rule, you know, EC2 instance should not allow unrestricted protocol access. There's a high severity. Uh, we've got the this one, which basically comes up on all my machines, uh, which I should probably change. And then we've got a EC2 instance should not have a public address, right? So again, 278s. Now, if we actually go and have a look, if I go and grab the deployment ID here, doo -doo -doo, and go to secure state, I'll just uh, query on that, let's search. So we'll get that back. Now we can see that we've got three findings. So let's have a view of the findings. And so this was literally deployed if we, uh, we should actually see that in here. So we can see, um, you can see how it's got the, you know, 
it, it knows where it is in the in the in the scheme of things. We can see there my three risks. They match what's back in CodeStream, uh, and that's you know they're the rules. They're the they're the ones that we've um, that we've found. So if I go back to this one, we view the details just to show you. Uh, let's. So just to show you, we can see that, you know, it was, uh, where is it? Here we go. So this is when the notification came. So we cloud trail and we can see that within, you know, a minute, uh, well, actually less than, uh, it's gathered all the information that it needs, right? To be able to give this uh, risk score. Uh, so if we, we go there, we can, Again, we can see the exact same things. I can improve it, I can deny it. Maybe you just have an auto deny if it fails certain things. Now, the, this why this is important is because, well, if you move this as far, you know, left as you can, sure, you can validate the infrastructure's code and whatnot, but when it deploys, you then do an extra validation to make sure have I violated or any of the um, uh, uh, rules or constraints that are in the environment, or, you know, because of something else, uh, some other deployment, this is now, you know, this is now in a vulnerable state, right? Uh, if we have a look at the other one that approved, uh, that just went through automatically, we can see that didn't, didn't need to be run and it just auto approved. Uh, and same thing, uh, we can look at this, we can see that we've got uh, one back. I can see assess the risk score, I've only got 48, my limit's 70. Uh, again, if I go and grab this deployment ID, and go back to skill state, paste that in there, scan, I've got that one, and we can see there, I've got one finding at 48, and that's just the same thing that all my, all my VMs have got deployed, uh, which, I, which I should change. But yeah, it's uh, that violation, that's not an issue, it's not a security problem, and we can see there that it's got no external connectivity, right? Uh, you can see everything that it's connected to, uh, and it's, yeah, it's uh, all good. So um, that is pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to share the code uh, as always. And yeah, it's just giving you an idea of what can be achieved uh, when you're doing your deployment. So, you know, whether it's to, uh, you know, native AWS, native Azure, native GCP, it doesn't matter. Right, um, you can set your rules, your violations, all those sort of things at an organizational level, uh, and it's going to constantly be scanning and whatnot. Uh, and you can have, you know, you can have um, uh, uh, workloads and other things kick off as part of a remediation activity uh, when things get triggered and all those sort of things. Yeah, all good. But you know, this is this is pretty cool. Uh, and what I love about it is there's nothing else. Uh, out there that does this in real time or near real time. So as I said, it's usually less than 10 seconds uh, before those risk scores are available, right? Um, and while it might um, seem like a waste to stop the deployment after it's been deployed, that's why I've put an approval in there because that can go to somewhere else like a security, uh, the security BU or something else within your organization. And they can either go, yep, no, nah, that's fine. We accept that risk uh, and continue on. Uh, but if it meets all the parameters, just keeps flying through. Anyway, hope you're all staying safe out there. Have a good one. Till next time. See you, bye.